Welcome to Stasis. This is a point-and-click sci-fi horror adventure game. I've been waiting for it to come out for quite a while, so I'm really excited to jump into it, because it is exactly the sort of game that I just love. So if you'd like to play this for yourself, I'll have some links in the description, and let's just jump right into it. Device. Plug suit quantum storage device is ready for physical record storage. Okay, here we go. So we're in a spaceship that seems to be above Neptune, and I've just awoken out of stasis, hence the name of the game. And, um, I appear to be one of the lucky ones. 
Because the other people in these cryotubes seem to have been in there so long that they turned into skeletons. A horrifying face is pressed against the glass of this pod, its skin pulled taut over its bones. Yeah. So I'm one of the lucky ones, but I haven't exactly come out unscathed. I'm in really bad shape. This isn't my ship. Isn't his ship. So he's been transported to a different ship? After going into stasis? Hmm. Now I have played this game for a little bit. I did play the alpha demo that came out a while ago, so this isn't a completely blind pay playthrough. I have played through the first, like, 10-20 minutes or so. So I'm in bad shape and I know exactly where to go to go get fixed up. My... My heart! Please seek immediate medical attention. Increased heart rate detected. Automated medical care systems are non-functional. Please seek medical attention. <laughs> Try it. Is there something back there? Obviously something has happened on board. Beyond just simply time passing so everything turning into disrepair, but there's a huge blood smear on the floor. Which... Doesn't exactly comfort me because the blood smear seems to go inside of the infirmary, which is where I need to go. to reopen it myself. Yeah, so this place is just... hasn't been used in so long. Everything's coated in dust. You can see dust just flying through the air. But there's still power. And there's about to be more power. Because I need to get the diagnostics system working. Alright, so I can only power two things at one time. Well, actually, te technically only one thing at one time. Because this button simply turns on the power. And then the other is directed to one of three things. So let's turn on the scanner. I need to scan myself. Emergency life support active. Oops, that was the wrong one. Not make scanner active. There we go. Alright, let's get ourselves fixed up. This equipment provides a medical diagnosis of a specimen through a non-invasive scanning procedure. Treatment is administered through a nanite solution drug cocktail that is delivered intravenously. Sounds very unpleasant. Doc made scanner active. Multiple injuries detected. Emergency medical kit created. Nanite solution, anticoagulant, and morphine combination suggested. Thank you for using DocMate systems. Have a nice day. Thank you, creepy robot face. That thing has a really creepy face. It looks like a baby or something. The emergency metal, uh, medical kit sits on the glowing slab, automatically filled with the required dosage of medication.
Alright, so we have the mixture and an empty syringe. Let's fill it up. And let's shove this nasty cocktail cocktail inside of our veins. Jesus. It's like what, three different drugs in one? Anticoagulant, something else, and morphine. I guess the nanite solution is probably gonna do the most of the most of the repairing. Deep breath. But but dad. Sandy said that if you have bad dreams and you can't wake up that, you'll be stuck in them forever. Well, I'll have a good talk to Sandy's parents. But is it true? Becca, don't worry, you won't have any dreams for the entire trip. But if you do, just squeeze Teddy, and I promise they'll go away. Now legs up, lay down. There you go. Sweet dreams, my girl. No, wait, sing it. Sing the song. John, looks like we have a song to sing. Go to sleep, my baby girl, in your warm bed. Soon you will rise again, so drift away, sleepy head. Dream of us, and you will see. Monsters can't harm you or me Close your eyes again And worry no more Stars and the moons They will pass us by soon A new day will surely be Upon you and me So go to sleep, my baby girl In your warm bed Soon you will rise again So drift away, sleepy head You know, you could have just told her that we're gonna have so many drugs in our system that we'll barely remember our own names. Uh, yeah. Somehow squeezing Teddy seemed a little more comforting than you'll be in a drug-induced coma. We are almost done here. Do I get a Teddy? You, you get a hug. Rebecca? I need to... My, my wife... My child... I need to find someone. I need to get out of here. Vital medical functions have been restored to benchmark levels. Is it just me or did the little girl... Uh, Becca, I think was her name. The way she spoke was really, really strange. It sounded like her voice was either computer-generated or had been extremely heavily edited. It was really weird. Anyway, alright, so we all went into stasis at the same time. John, Rebecca, and Becca, I think was everyone's names. Husband, wife, and child. But he said that this isn't his ship. Like, he's been transferred from his stasis pod into a different stasis pod, or to a different ship in the same stasis pod. So I wonder, well, why? And where are his wife and child now? On board this ship, were they transferred to? Or maybe he was the only one transferred. I don't know, but uh, at least now John can walk properly and even run. So let's start taking a look around and get a feel for the place. This access terminal is inactive, it's display black. It's the surgeon terminal, which I can actually turn on the power for that. And I believe there's some log files and stuff on this computer here. Although I haven't read them yet. The darkness congeals into fearsome shapes in the gap between the bed and the wall. Yeah, this place could really use some lights. It's got some light, otherwise it'd be pitch black, but god is it creepy. It's like running on emergency lighting or something like that. 
the unwrinkled linen smells faintly of antiseptic. A number of dark stains cover the sheets. Blood, probably. Several pieces of surgical equipment have been left out on the side tray table. They are corroded and caked in dry blood. Why would used surgical instruments just be left out? Some sort of emergency? I mean, well, yeah, seriously, like, where is everyone else? The ship has been abandoned, it seems like, but why? Why was it abandoned? What happened? Where did everyone go? Where's the bodies? An abandoned wheelchair with crumbling leather armrests. The ventilator sits motionless and unable to sustain life. Yeah, I love how much detail there is in all the text descriptions for everything. There's even separate descriptions for each, for each different type of uh, waste bin. This is organic. The pungent stench of decomposition wafts from the bin marked organic waste. Surgical. It's clean and empty. Hmm. A surgical waste, this is surgical equipment. It's for excess surgical equipment. Alright, let's go ahead and activate this, um, the surgery machine. Robotic Surgeon by Doc Mate Systems. It's funny, everything seems so high-tech, but these computer systems seem so... low-tech. Like, it seems like it's text-only for the most part. There's no real GUI. Logs and prep. So, choose what I want to do and it'll extend the arm and... refit the correct tool. <laughs> it's, it's on high-speed neural drill right now. Can just do an organ extraction, you know, just take out uh, take out my heart or something. Harvest my skin? Ew! Product spinal tagging. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I think that might explain what I'm doing here. And the purpose of the ship. Aren't these very suspicious things to do? These are not routine surgery things, right? This is not routine surgery. This is not help somebody heal surgery. Help somebody get better surgery. This is a black market sell people's organs surgery. Look, extract organs, harvest their skin, tag the spine of the product. The product is the people. And this is not my ship, so does that mean perhaps what ship he was on was stolen? And he was taken... Yeah, oh my god. Maybe they... Maybe they're... I'm not sure what you'd call them. Pirates or whatever you want to call them. That uh, take ships when everybody's in stasis and they just take them. Take the pods. They're already self-contained. They're already knocked out. You know, there's no need to really use violence or anything to get them. They're already knocked out and in stasis. And then, when they want some more organs, some more things to sell on the market, just pop them out of stasis and get extracting. Jesus. Alright, let's take a look at the logs. Product. P. Soul. Operator. Cranial bone extraction for Sigma Labs. Yep, so they're doing... Not an organ extraction, but a bone extraction. For a lab. So I guess they're supplying... Medical... Parts... <laughs> to whoever needed it. Last surgery completed before special ops surgery lockdown. Product expired during surgery, but bone extraction was successful. 
Jesus Christ, referring to Peace Soul, the person, as product. Product expired. Special Ops Surgery Lockdown. I wonder what that was about. Additional note. The neural drill is stuck again. Every time I try to change it, the arm detracts. Please get maintenance down to fix it. Let's do an organ extraction. The arm for the automated robotic surgeon is extended. The mechanism that holds the neural drill in place is unlocked and open. Yeah, I'm guessing maybe I need to do something with this at some point. But I don't think I can do anything at the moment. Because as it says, yeah, the neural drill is stuck in it. Even though I selected something other than the neural drill. And every time I try to change it, the arm detracts, which is exactly what happened. Just detracted on its own. So maybe I can fix it at some point, but at the moment I don't think I need any surgery. I certainly don't intend on extracting any of my organs. Alright. I need to find out what's going on board going on, on board this ship, where everyone's gone, where John's wife and kid have gone. Several hastily discarded infirmary ward screens. Yeah, it looks like an emergency or something happened. A stripped-down hospital bed sits in the corner. Its side rails bent outward, and the head and foot sections broken as if by tremendous force. Hmm. As if some creature was perhaps tied down to the bed at some point, and then escaped and broke free. Hmm. A tangle of long discarded and moldering bed linen lies in this infant crib. What the hell happened? Attention. Due to the threat of external contamination, a security lockdown is in order. Please meet at your closest administration office for further instructions. Dried blood streaks the floor in a wide swath, as if someone had been dragged or slowly crawled away. It's hard to tell whether it came from or went toward the infirmary door. Yeah. It does end rather suddenly, doesn't it? It doesn't continue on into that little section up there towards the infirmary, and it doesn't continue on this way. As if they were picked up or something. Dragged and then picked up. Some screens over here. A bank of static-filled monitors lines the wall. Their display is all emitting the same dim, distorted image. Ah, no good. Yeah, it's even marked here, Product Storage, Bay 1, Bay 2. I came from Bay 1. Looks like the door is messed up for Bay 2. But I wonder if there's anybody alive in there. There could be someone else like me. The heavy metal door stands unmoving, occasionally emitting a mechanical hum as the servos and motors attempt futilely to move it open. Product check-in terminal. Jesus Christ. This place is sick. Alright, I'm gonna go back here and take a look around. Because I didn't get a good look at this place. I was too worried about John's heart failing. Alright, so this is where I came from. A smeared pool of some dark, sticky, congealed substance. It looks like blood. What the fuck? What in the hell was that, and where did it come from? That was not human. That did not sound human. 
Jesus. Alright. Let's take a look at the other product. Cryo terminal. Jackson P, batch number, blah blah blah. Cryo tube malfunction. The contorted body inside this pod is suspended in a thick amber fluid that distorts its features. So is that how they died? All of their cryopods malfunctioned except for mine? I was the lucky one. This terminal is just offline. A horrifying face is pressed against the glass of this pod. Oh, I already read that. Skin pulled taut over its bones. Ew. Ew. Uh, this is my terminal, right? Appears to be offline. Or is this my terminal? Wait, I think this is mine. Yeah, this is my terminal. Marichek J. So John Marichek. Batch number 165A8. Cryostasis interrupted. Yeah, what was it interrupted by? Did somebody let me out? I certainly didn't do it myself. Either somebody or something let me out, or perhaps it just happened automatically. Some sort of a safety feature activated or something. What about the batch number? Is anybody from the same batch? 165A8. 165A7. 165A4. Nope. The humid steam gives off a sickly sweet smell as it rises from the glass tube. The room is still and frigid, but warmth radiates from the machinery. Yeah, I mean, I guess if your heart rate is slowed down for stasis, you would have to keep them warm. Because they wouldn't generate much heat on their own in stasis. Of course, I don't actually know much about the stasis process. But I imagine they must slow down the heart, if not completely stop it. Inside the glass tube, a corpse hangs like a grotesque puppet, tangled in the pipes and wires that had once provided life. It is now no more than a lifeless husk. These poor people. Anderson S. Cryotube malfunction. Please see maintenance. So I'm guessing something horrible happened on board this ship. And then there was nobody left to maintain the the cryotubes. And so most people just died. The well-worn leather of the chair is cracked, showing its age. The only sound in the room is the hiss of static from the monitors. Their flickering light illuminates the leather chair, the cracks in its surface evident even beneath the shroud of dust that covers it. Alright, let's get the hell out of here. The chair sits vacant, the leather split with wear along the seams and rounded edges. Corroded padding protrudes from the tears in the fabric. Looks like that terminal's dead. Dried blood trails downward from the countertop. The words, Holotron Projector, are embossed in metal on this piece of machinery, but the screen is smashed and it looks beyond repair. A useless robotic arm sits clamped to the desk. Alright, product storage check-in terminal. Yeah, look at the look at the keys on this keyboard. They look like a like a typewriter or something. It's weird how high tech but low tech these computer systems are. I mean, they have holographic projectors, but their keyboards look like typewriters, and they have, like, no GUI. Checklist notifications. Hmm. Let's look at the checklist. Ooh. Uh, let's look at mine first. Alright, um... 
Blood type O positive. Male, 38. Stasis pod acquired. Personnel transport ship intercepted en route to Titan Station. To Titan Station Esponza. One of three stasis pods. One of three. Will the other two be my wife and then my child? I think so. And yeah, they intercepted it, so they did. They they stole they stole us. Alright, what about poor Anderson? O negative male thirty six. Mining transport orbiting Titan. Part of a long term terraforming operation. One of seventeen stasis pods. Reserved for Project Kitchen Knife. That doesn't sound good. I, d I don't want to be a part of Project Kitchen Knife. Good thing I'm not, but poor Anderson. Jackson. Male 19. Escape pod from down transport between Earth and Mars. One of four. Jesus. They stole somebody. They captured somebody from a freaking stasis pod. Evil bastards. Peters C. 46. Returning luxury transport. All hands lost. One of 12 stasis pods. Alright, let's look at notifications. Notice. Oh, these are all different notices. Let's see. In addition to Dr. Essex, we are happy to welcome Sarah Salvatore, the new head nurse of product storage. It was a sad day when Nurse Daniels left us for greener pastures, and she will be missed. As our cloning facility has been deemed too costly, we are happy to note that product storage has now been upgraded to a level 6 facility. We are now the number one supplier of human specimens to the entire facility. After the unfortunate incident in product storage 2, we'll be undergoing regular upgrades and maintenance, starting with a new lockdown and security system. Thank you for your hard work and dedication. Two weeks ago, a false security lockdown occurred in product storage in product storages 2 and 3. Kane Corporation has terminated operations on both floors until a cleanup crew can evaluate the situation. We regret to report that 17 crew deaths and the expiration of 12 unopened products occurred due to the emergency venting procedures. Hmm. We're now the number one supplier of human specimens to the entire facility. What a thing to be proud of. So I guess I wrote the, read those in the, in the opposite order. Should probably start from the bottom up. <sighs> but yeah, so that's what happened in Product Storage 2, and I guess perhaps why the door is broken. Perhaps. Maybe they never got around to actually having time to fix it before. Something went really, really wrong, and the whole place was abandoned. Yeah, false security lockdown. Due to the emergency venting procedures. Hmm. So, it's procedure to vent when there's a security lockdown. I wonder why. Is that just to kill the people? Like, you know, there's dangerous people in this room, so it what closes it off and then vents to kill them? That's damn dangerous. That's really dangerous. Alright, well, there's only one way to go. Is anyone there? More blood. Yeah, it's like there was a huge struggle on board the ship, and then everybody just left. 
like one big battle. Like everything went to hell and people left things where they were and some stuff was destroyed. Littered papers with illegible writing. Oh, these are papers. The illegible notes on these scattered pieces of paper indicate the author must have been a doctor or a scientist. With a fine layer of dust and leaking oil underneath, the loader appears to have been unused for a long time. That goes to maintenance. Code 5449, level lockdown. So I'm guessing I'm gonna have to lift the security lockdown if I want to get anywhere. Security lockdown? Must be why there's nobody here. Maybe they were evacuated. The locked freight elevator seems to be the only way out of this level. I gotta go this way. So where does this go? That goes to maintenance. And this goes to... Empty. Fuck, I just... Where the hell is everyone? The brittle leaves from the dead tree have long since fallen to the ground. What the hell is that whispering? Jesus. This place is so creepy. A Luxo lamp. Your bar of choice does it again. Can I turn it on? Puddle of mud has an all new synth stripper. She is oh so 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 hot. Visit us at Crew Quarters Sigma. There we go. That did almost nothing. It's a radio. The radio is set to auto scan, picking up various transmissions. Oh, that's what I'm hearing. Uh, can we turn that off? That's creepy. No? I guess not. Alright, let's use the computer. Wait a minute, can I seriously not turn that thing off? It looks like he wants to use it. I see the little hand icon. But he won't use it. All right, let's try to ignore it. Let's ignore its creepy, ethereal ghost noises. Product storage security. Yes, please. Administration office door unlocked. Good. Unlocked. Maintenance door. Oh, there we go. Notice. Maintenance doors unlocked. Lock will be engaged in three hours. So it's going to relock itself after a certain amount of time. Storage bay 2, damaged, call maintenance. Main freight elevator. Ah, can't change that. Oh, it's like, whoa! Jesus, was that the radio or...? I, I don't even know if I want to know. Alright, so I've opened up maintenance. And the others I can't touch. Robert Freely, General Administration Officer. Mm, hold on. Yeah, I guess I should start with the bottom one. I spoke to Sarah Salvatore, a nurse in product storage, about getting in some new personnel to help with the opening of new stasis pods. The last nurse left due to the emotional stress. I guess she had a breakdown when they cracked a pod and there was a kid inside. <laughs> uh, what, that's what it took? It's like, God, we've been, you know, killing dozens and hundreds and hundreds of people all the time, but hey, it's a kid. Wow, that's kind of fucked up. It is kind of fucked up, but it was pretty fucked up before, too. New doctor complaint. The new doctor in charge of cracking pods has complained about the surgical bot. Something about the tool selection. I told him just to log a complaint with maintenance like the rest of us, and hope something happens. 
He was not impressed. Maintenance was down here for the final rewiring of the lockdown systems. It's all working. Except they crossed wires with the central product storage systems. Every single time a leak is reported in the storage tanks, the system resets instead of auto-sealing the leak. It's something we can't deal with in the short term. I know it's going to take forever to get them back down here to fix this. Hmm, this might be important. Every time there's a leak in the storage tanks, the system resets. I might need to maybe make a Your leak to make it reset. Again. Puddle of mud has an all new sim stripper. She is oh so 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 hot. Visit us at three quarters sigma. Oh wait a minute. By reading from the bottom to the top, I think I read this backwards. Dang it! <laughs> Security told us 14 days ago that they'd be rewiring the lockdown systems. So for two weeks we've had to deal with random system shutdowns. Two days ago, Peters was locked in the bathroom while it flooded, and we only got him out this morning. <laughs> I'm just thankful this didn't happen last Tuesday when hydroponics had the screw up with the poisoned mushrooms, or he would have been painting the walls of the elevators in transit to the crew level bathrooms. Oh my god. Two days ago, Peters was lost, uh, locked in the bathroom while it flooded, and we only got him out this morning. He was in there for two days in a flooding bathroom. Jesus. That sounds horrible. Alright, I think that was it, right? No, no, I didn't read this. Alright, let's go from the top down. Lockdowns. Just a note to remind all crew that the lockdown system is still connected to the storage tanks. If the system locks down, you can falsify a leak and it will reset. Yeah, that's definitely something I'm gonna have to do. Bathrooms. The bathrooms are now in working order. Uh, in working order. Peter will be back on duty in four shift rotations. Ah, oh, poor Peter. Emergency glass box. The bright red wall mounted box reads In case of emergency, break glass. I'd say this is an emergency. A note inside the empty emergency box reads Due to budget cuts, the fire axe has been replaced with this note. Have a nice day. Fuck you, Kane Corporation! Knife like shard sits among the pieces of shattered glass. Alright, at least that'll be useful. Damn it. Cut myself. This is short. Alright, so I've got a syringe and a shard of glass. Ugh. I can actually take a seat. All right, take a breath, John. There has to be someone here, someone who can help. Someone. Oh, here's the the bathroom. Hmm, lovely looking. So modern. A metal sink, stained by the drip, drip, drip of blood. Alright, so we've got running water. That's good. A filthy wet towel plugs the hole of the toilet. Ew, am I gonna take the- Oh god. Ugh, this... is disgusting. Why in the name of all that is wonderful in this world did I just take that filthy toilet towel? Alright, so I've got a shard of glass, an empty syringe, and an extremely disgusting dirty wet towel. Uh, a surprisingly clean toilet bowl. Good to know the important stuff keeps on working. 
Flushing won't clean this metal toilet bowl of the rust that has accumulated over the years. Hmm, so why is this one clean? No, seriously, why is that one clean but the others are dirty and rusty? Does that mean someone's been living here? Perhaps the same person who may have let me out. Maybe someone is living here. Maybe. Hmm. I mean, I suppose I could clog this toilet if I wanted to. Hmm. I don't really know why I'd want to, so yeah, let's not do that. Oh, hold on, can I, like, wash the towel? Nah, that's ridiculous. Alright. Kane Corporation, the last truly great company, wants to... Okay, so maintenance has been opened. Warning. Air filtration system offline. Toxicity increasing to dangerous level. Does that mean I'm gonna die if I stay here? Pressure release valve. The large red wheel might have a chance of turning if you give it your all. I think I have to. To get rid of the gases? Let's see. <laughs> Hmm. So I need like a crowbar or something then, right? Unless this wet, dirty towel might solve, might save the day. Hmm. Maybe. Nope. Yeah, no. Oh. Oh. He doesn't sound like he's doing well. Smell. Oh, it's, it's. It's sweet. Oh, it's a sickly sweet smell of the cryotubes, I guess. Hmm, PDA. Well, you know what? I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode. Yeah, I'm really enjoying this so far. This is exactly what I thought it would be. It is sci-fi, it is sci-fi horror, and it is point and click. Plenty of things to look at, plenty of things to read. And I just, oh, I love the environments. So just grim and dirty and creepy and dusty and abandoned and filled with bloodstains and I just want to know what happened. You know, what happened aboard this ship? Dear God, what happened? It's like a, a nightmare. And I freaking love it. Alright, so I hope you've enjoyed so far. And I'll be back soon.